Uh, if you'd want to hear me rant about politics, skip to have one of those robot ladies going. <laughs> 4107. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can do that through the power of Eddie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It is 2021. Yeah. Waiting to dry. Oh, we are back. Forgot my soundboard, so we're off on a good foot. So, <laughs> yeah. so Josh will be providing our, our sound effects this this afternoon. <laughs> but uh, I am Sergio Lopez. I'm Josh Lawyer. And yep. So first episode of 2021. I think this is year four. I believe. I know. That's right. We started in January. Of 2018. Damn. We're getting fucking... We're getting old. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, yeah. How was your New Year's? It was good. Um, Vanessa and I just went out. Uh, we usually do a thing where we'll just find something outdoorsy to do. And it happened to be uh, a nice enough day. So we went out to go play an air paint at the park. And so that is our chill, low-key... It's a vibe thing. Yeah, New for Year's. sure. Low key vibe thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. That's cool. Did you guys do anything? Uh, we just hung out with two of our friends. Oh, okay. Nothing like uh, too crazy. We just hung out and, I don't know. I mean, what can you do? Where? Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's what we did. I feel like that's probably what most people did is hung out with like two friends or something. <laughs> right, yeah. You know, if you're lucky enough to live in New Zealand or Thailand, you're probably at the club. <laughs> right. Pop, yeah. Popping bottles full of, uh, I Bub. got what you need. <laughs> oh, yeah. So come give me a look. I don't know. I feel like I landed three other words. Then, <laughs> but I got the rhythm. I mean, that's all that matters. Right. The cadence of the song. If you know that, <laughs> you can make up whatever you want. Right. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, nothing too amazing mm -hmm. but yeah we you know we got like five days in before she hit the fan again so uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah shit was uh i don't know oh, fucking you're talking about the yeah i just hate world that. news i think i hate everybody you know what i mean like i mean not everyone but like uh, the far left and the far right i just it may, I just, uh, I don't know. There's something about that, those groups that think they can fucking tell everyone how to do things. Mm -hmm. And it just makes me want to punch them in the fucking face. It's like, <laughs> it's like, can you guys shut the fuck up? No one cares about you. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I had had like a little moment in the morning where I was like, oh, Georgia won. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, I know we don't like talking politics, but uh, <laughs> oh yeah, with the uh, the house flipping or is it the house? I said it. I forget which one. Uh, yeah, the Senate. <laughs> yeah. Stay, stay. You know what I mean, Sergio? No, know what's going on in the world? <laughs> <laughs> stay uh, but yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah. So this week fucking sucked for me. I don't know. Mm. I hate this shit. I like, it's like, uh, I felt like there was like five days where I was like, we don't have to care about that shit. You know, like <laughs> right, yeah. we could care about shark attacks, <laughs> you know, the things I, things that don't matter in life, squirrels <laughs> yeah. on water skis. Yeah. I saw it in Monkey my future. brains getting bigger. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> let's go. Like it's finally about time where we don't pay attention to like stupid shit. Mm -hmm. And then a fucking, you know. I grew with both people. <laughs> I want to talk some shit, but um, yeah. I'm so fucking mad. I don't know. <laughs> I hate Did this shit. you have hope for, for 2021? I still, I mean, <laughs> I just keep counting down the days. It's like, you know, when you were a kid and you had like the rings and you're counting down the days to Christmas. The rings? You know, like the paper rings and you rip one off. Did you ever do that? No. At our school, they would make paper rings, and you would make them for, like, arts and craft. And okay. then every day you would get closer to Christmas, you would rip a ring, like, a paper ring. And it, like, was your way of keeping track of how many days till Christmas. Mm, I never heard of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was good times. <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah. So what are you ripping the rings off for now? Uh, just for I'm uh, in my hopes and dreams. I'm like hoping that uh, the president changeover is gonna create an environment where I don't have to fucking hear a bunch of people talk about this shit all the time mm. while I talk about it. Right. Now. <laughs> right. I don't think that's happening. Um, I think there'll be something either side, whatever side. It's the opposite raises a stink about it. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it'll be as intense as the last four years. Mm, probably I not. Guess. Cause I don't think he'll be as much of an instigator. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I just don't think it, he'll have the platform he has now. Mm. So yeah. So oh, yeah, that's true too. <laughs> I mean, the hope is that that does happen. Right. I mean, that's the question I always ask is like, do these motherfuckers want Trump to dis like the people that hate Trump, do they want him to go away? Mm -hmm. Or do they want to, like, continue to, like, talk about him? Mm. Do you mean sometimes people enjoy an enemy in life? Oh, for sure. And it's like, uh, maybe we can just fucking forget about him. And then <laughs> that's, that's your punishment. The man who loves attention, ignore him. It's that simple. That's the biggest punishment you can give. Yeah. Um, but I think you're right. I think there are people who definitely need something in their life to push back against yeah people look for purpose all the time <laughs> and when you live in a fucking world where you know survival isn't a purpose and <laughs> i don't know people are you know not so religious because they're realizing how much of a piece of shit that thing that idea is right and so now they're like what now yeah can, exactly brings me purpose mm-hmm and they filled that empty hole with politics, which is <laughs> fucking stupid. God yeah. Damn. Um, yeah. So, so hopefully we can get back to not that, <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, shitty week. <laughs> I, I just hate, I mean, I didn't hesitate to like fucking explode on the podcast when people put black screens on their, eye, on their fucking instagram you know and it's like sure this shit is in my opinion it's like worse mm -hmm. it's the dumbest shit i've seen in the last four years in my opinion and mm -hmm. uh fuck i feel like i come down so harshly on my side do you know what i mean <laughs> sure like i'm like come on guys we're better than that but <laughs> then uh yeah i don't know it's fucking annoying mm. uh so hopefully you know we don't have a last event before the sh before in eight days. Oh, uh -huh. but hmm. the fuck do I know? <laughs> Sorry guys. I didn't mean to do this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, know, you can tell Sergio doesn't have anything. To say. <laughs> uh, I pretty much just, you know, caught the, the third hand info about all that stuff happening. I didn't really pay attention to it really. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it was. Con I don't think I consider it a coup, but uh, a, uh, a f it could have been worse. Is kind of what I think. Yeah, like there could have been some dead politicians. That's true. Um, I suppose so. Yeah. I mean, there was like, I think five people died. Uh, there was guys with like fucking those like hand those like. Those zip tie handcuffs. Oh, uh huh. A guy with like twenty Molotov cocktails. Five people died. I didn't even know that. Yeah, one cop, mm -hmm. and then a lady that got shot, and then oh, three other people. Oh wow, that's crazy. Cop committed suicide today. I have no idea why, but hmm. he did. Like and that was part of that was the... there as a huh. cop. Well, that's crazy. <sighs> yes, I don't know. I don't. I mean, it's a weird situation. Hmm. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of conspiracy theories going around about how <laughs> shit's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You mean like there's an insider? <laughs> well, it was funny cause I was on Reddit, uh, and there was someone added the like video of the lady that got shot hmm. and then underneath it, it was just like a bunch of people saying like, that was Antifa that did this. Oh, uh-huh. Not, not up. <laughs> This was all Antifa pretending to be yada yada. And you're like, oh my God. Oh yeah. Oh. Vanessa uh, was uh, telling me about that because she has some like 
far right wing uh cousin or something like that and they're all on those message boards and coming up with theories and that was one so of them. weird <laughs> yeah they're like oh the guy put his hat backwards that was a symbol they said <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> i don't even know how to fucking talk to people like that anymore all right uh but yeah it's like reverse engineering everything mm -hmm. it's what it ends up being nowadays and a bunch of fucking hypocrites hmm uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm exhausted by the shit. <laughs> Other than that, life's good. I can't <laughs> wait. I honestly, it was like five days. I was like, this is what things used to be like. <laughs> maybe more, maybe six. It happened on the six, right? Did it? Like New I Year's was know. leading up to New Year's was pretty good. Mm -hmm. It was like no one was talking about this shit. My feeds weren't piled on by everyone posting the same exact shit mm. as if we're not all we don't all have access to the internet that people have <laughs> to be like look at this and i'm like yeah we all saw god if you haven't then fuck i don't know <laughs> maybe you're not then like you're not a, uh god i don't know oh uh, you mean people like reposting stuff yeah. on facebook and all that? i've seen it all everyone's seen it all if you if you want to find it it's right there mm. do you know what i mean like the internet exists if you want to know what happened you just look it up i don't need right. that i don't need everyone's fucking repost of a meme that they saw that they thought was clever that mm. everyone else posted i don't know mm. uh but yeah i mean the shit is exhausting uh there's uh, fucking people. <laughs> God damn. Find purpose somewhere else. Do you know what I mean? That's true. Find <laughs> purpose. I keep thinking like, this is my theory about what's happening is that <clears throat> there is that like search for purpose. Mm -hmm. And there's also like a group. There's everyone's the world's fucked right now a bit. Like as far as like, uh, kind of, politics managing capitalism i would say hmm. i'm not anti-capitalist at all but there has to be a managing of it in a way where you can um make sure that people don't gain too much power you don't want monopolies right this has always sure. been a thing forever mm -hmm. and so what ends up happening is that the workforce over a long fucking over a good amount of time has just been full-on fucked mm -hmm. for you know the last i don't know how long and motherfuckers are getting mad on both sides and everyone's looking to politics to solve the problem. Mm. And I think there's like a, a beacon of hope in my mind. There's like a pathway that I think is maybe inevitable, but I'm not sure, which is that the working man gets fucked and what ends up happening is it's an engineered problem, right? So like uh, human beings being um, survive, survivalist, right? We survive and adapt. And so there's a, there's a problem. And so the natural progression is to evolve, to change that. So they've engineered the issue of fucking over the working class Mm -hmm. And I think the solution is, is that the working class is slowly going to become weirdly uh, a bunch of uh, entrepreneurs Yeah, is my guess. Mm -hmm. And there's like, there's, there's so, I think there's like little hints of it. Mm -hmm. And I just think there's going to be a tipping point at some point where there's going to be like the Amazons and then there's going to be like, so there's going to be like the working class that maybe late to the show and the, or the people that just want to work at a job. And then mm -hmm. there's going to be the people who are tired of being fucked and don't want to look at politics for them to solve their answer. Mm -hmm. So then they figure out how to survive through other means. Right. And, and then I think that's a great outcome. It's mm -hmm. a great, but enough people have to like stop thinking of politics as the reason, as the way to solve your answers. Cause it just doesn't work that way. Mm hmm. I mean, the idea is that they don't fucking write laws that fuck you, right? Yeah. Uh, but other than that, and that to protect you from other people's take other people taking advantage of you, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and outside of that, it should be like, I mean, to assume that they're going to somehow fix us. I don't. 
I can't think of a government that succeeded at that, hmm. at trying to fix, help the population in a, in a very, uh, I mean, there's like little glimpses, you know, mm-hmm. like the Nordic countries or some shit, but even though right. there's some weird shit that's involved. Hmm. So I don't know. I hope that's the, I hope that's like the pathway, right? Mm-hmm. Based on the system that plays that people just start figuring out like, I'll just like start my little, when side hustles become full-time jobs. Yeah. I think it'll slowly become more of that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, speaking of monopolies and all that, did you hear about how um, they said that uh, Facebook has to like break up? Um, yeah. some of his companies uh, do you think that will do anything if it actually goes through uh, it'll or you think it's like too far gone what I think it'll do is make Facebook more rich in a weird way I mean hmm. in my opinion Facebook is probably devalued so when you break up Facebook into multiple things all of a sudden all those things become super valuable mm-hmm. so like <clears throat> when you buy like say if you buy Facebook stock right yeah and that that includes what Facebook owns. It's the, the all-encompassing Facebook. Okay. So when Instagram becomes its own fucking thing, it's going to like, its stock is just going to shoot the fuck up to be like a Facebook because it's just as powerful. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really fucking matter because they're going to all work together anyways. It's like brother-sister companies. Mm, That's right. what happens. Yeah. It's a tough, it's a tough, in my opinion, it's super tough for, um, for them to actually successfully break up or this idea of a monopoly, like mm-hmm. in a, uh, in a meaningful way, because they're just better at capitalism at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. They have all yeah. the tricks. They know all the things. Sure. They have all the lawyers. They take advantage of the system the best. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. And just breaking it up makes it just makes everyone realize the value of those other things. Mm. And so now Facebook is probably all those businesses. If you, after maybe like if we look back at it in like three years, all the businesses they break it up into are probably all going to be fully more worth more than Facebook was as a, as one entity. Mm. Uh, but I don't know what the fuck to do about that. Right. Yeah. Um, well, do you think for the user end, do you think there'll be any uh, change for the better if that happens? For the user? No, I think Facebook's fu- I mean... I don't think it's legitimately splitting up. Mm, mm -hmm. I think it's hard to do that with those kind of companies in general, I think, because they're like, it's just like this thing in the internet. Right. Like Amazon seems like a much more simpler thing to kind of break up Mm -hmm. in a way because it's a physical place. It's like, okay, you can't have all of the, I don't know. I don't even know how you would do that. But that's the one that's like the... The crazy one, but I don't know. Mm, right. Yeah. I don't make those. Those are like the hard decisions that politics have to figure out mm-hmm. and, and also navigate the, the waters of money while doing so. Hmm. Cause those people have the endless pockets and right. Yeah. And politics can legally take money here. So unlimited amounts by super PAC. So, you know, all they have to do is start a super PAC and ship them bucket loads of money. And then how the fuck do you mm. fight that as a politician when half your job is to raise funds? Yeah. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I got no answers for any of this shit. <laughs> All I know is it's a fuck system that if you rely on it to like solve your problems, you're kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and like, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, you can, I mean, I vote and I try to fucking make shit. Sure. Hopefully have people put in place to represent me and what I want. But Mm -hmm. I don't know. Other than that, I don't know what the fuck to do in that world. Yeah. I just keep trudging along. The world doesn't stop spinning and I'm not going to wait for anyone to like to help. Yeah. You know, and this isn't even like a pick yourself up by the bootstraps type shit because even with like the entrepreneurship where everyone's going to become their own thing it's like mm-hmm. the, it's like well you need help from people around you you know what i mean like yeah 
if I like for me, if I'm starting my shit, I still have to get like someone to print my clothes and all this stuff. And, Mm -hmm. and I still have people that like help me out and they're doing their own thing, Mm -hmm. whether it be whatever, you know, like if it's a business aspect or like accounting or yada, yada, it's all like, it's all, it's all other people helping me. It's not, you know, pick yourself up by your own bootstraps and just be proactive and yeah, you're going to build your own small community and your own little business. But, Mm -hmm. And it's not some do it your own self and stop complaining kind of shit, but it's just, it's just don't rely on those motherfuckers. You know, like you hope they do the best, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect it, I guess. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You're, you're just saying don't rely on them to like solve your problems for you if your life is you fucking retweeting politics shit (laughs) and following it nonstop, that has become your religion Hmm. you know and if you can't if you have a if you've built your fucking ideas of what you believe is good and bad based on like if i say oh what are you and you're like i'm a liberal and then i can just literally walk down the line of everything they believe and it somehow matches up Mm -hmm. to me that's like suspicious in a weird way do you know what i mean like sure it's in in my opinion it's like you might have been given all of your idea like you do have an original idea at this point or Mm. were you told to believe these things and and you've been convinced because that's the side you've picked and now it's easy to find arguments that confirm your ideas sure it's all very religious in a way that i think is you if you look back if you pull back you might think okay well that's you finding purpose in politics finding life meaning and thinking that this is going to be your savior. Like a religion is your side is going to win and all is going to be well and good. And it's like, Hmm. I'm not, you know, I have my own, I have my political beliefs and I, I lean left and I believe pretty much most things, but I understand that there's complicated arguments on both sides and that I can see someone's point of view, even though I disagree with them on something. Mm hmm. It just, there's a weird, um, you know, I mean, I'm sure people probably think that I support the people going into the White House, which I do because I support racists. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> But it's like, it's this weird idea that like, oh, because I don't fucking fight this person that I support them or something. When mm. I just think ideas are super complicated and nothing is as simple as good versus evil Mm, at the mm -hmm. end of the day. In my mind, these people were weaponized by politics, you know, because they're fucking, uh, you know, sheeple, bro. (laughs) But I think, I I mean, in a weird way, I think that they just got convinced to, that they were doing the right thing Mm -hmm. and that storming the castle was somehow an honorable act. Right. Um, to save the Republic or some shit, you know, they're all uh-huh. in their own little fucking movie or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're the star of the absolutely. action show. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe that's a, the fucking fault of social media. And I guess so. Yeah. They're the star of their own show. <laughs> that's kind of like the whole re- religious thing, it's like religious fervor almost. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, almost like, uh, like those conspiracy theories have almost taken the the place of faith in a way. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I mean, it used to be the conservative party used to be super religious, and that's how they got their votes. And now it's transitioned to some weird, like, you know, secretive. They're all, you know, I don't know the fuck. Mm-hmm. They 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 just figure out how to. I don't know. It's like this weird, it almost sounds like a conspiracy theory when you explain it. You're like, (laughs) they have this way of influencing people through conspiracy theories, which if you wanted to word it like they're brainwashing people, then all of a sudden I got a conspiracy on my hand. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) So, fuck. I mean, I don't know. That's funny because that used to be what they said about 
the far left with uh, when Bush was in office, it was all like conspiracy theories were all like left wing people. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like the whole like nine eleven thing. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure to the conspiratorial mind, we sound like a bunch. They're like, you don't even understand, man. They're all fucking in the same boat. <laughs> yeah. You don't even get it. <laughs> George Bush, Clinton's Obama. They're all the same. And I'm like, I just want to not pay attention to this. Do you get that? I just want to hear about shark attacks and squirrels on water skis. I don't want to know about, I don't want to care about these people at all. Mm. I don't want to know the ins and outs of their lives. I just leave us the fuck alone and um, do your job. And we want streets and parks and safety and uh, don't fucking judge people based on I don't know things that they didn't weren't didn't choose to be when they were born and shit like that. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that's what that's what we want. So leave us after that. Leave us the fuck alone. <laughs> yeah. Do your simple job. Leave us alone. I mean, maybe it's not that simple, but you signed up for it. So fuck off. <laughs> Do your job and leave us alone. It's. I mean, at the end of the day, we all just want the jobs to not disappear. It's for us to make a living and be secure and I don't know. Not, I don't know. Just don't, don't fuck it. I don't know. I'm so fucking exhausted by the shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, <laughs> Oh, another thing too is like, um, which I was going to bring up, which is funny. Uh, I was going to bring up, um, I don't know if it was before this all happened, but I was thinking about the keyboard, um, which we all know, right? Which is keyboard? Yeah, computer keyboard. Sure. Which we all know uh-huh. is a heaping pile of shit. <laughs> it's like a uh it was like the first prank ever invo- invented of like how do we put a lay out these keys so that it just doesn't make any sense? And I was thinking that like people think that they can that like they can solve that the that people can solve problems, and in my mind I'm like, the keyboard has been shitty since it was invented, and no one has gone. Listen, guys, we just have to change it to something where wherever fucking eight keys you click on are the most important eight keys, mm-hmm. and then we build from there. Or do it alphabetically, so we all just don't have to learn where every fucking key is because we already know the alphabet or some shit. Mm. So when you're like, we're going to make big changes, like they can't even change a fucking keyboard. Is there a big outcry to change the keyboard, though? I'm just saying (laughs) there's no fucking, we're slow to change. We're like, well, sure. people suck at changing shit. I mean. Well, it's like when they tried to make the metric system the standard. Right. Yeah, and when we all can agree it's better. <laughs> yeah, we can't do that shit for some reason. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> I don't know. It's like how how long is a mile? Uh, five thousand two hundred eighty feet. Why? Uh, there actually is some explanation for that. It's like very archaic, though. Yeah, you you want to know why the metric system is set up for why is a, why is a kilometer a kilometer? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's, easy. It's, it's in the fucking Powers word. Of ten, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't need to be like, well, one day they mm-hmm. they measured a city limit and mm-hmm. then they divided it by yeah, eight and yeah. then they found the circumference. Of yellow, and you're like, okay, there's simpler ways. Yeah. You don't have to stick to this shit because it's the old thing. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Like there's better. And that's the problem is like everyone can see that there's a better way. Mm-hmm. You just there. It's like, I don't know what the fuck it is. It's humans love for tradition or some shit or. I can't explain it, but it's just like things just don't change. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Be the change, Sergio. Be the change you want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Inspiration. Like uh, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was a PSA sound right there, but... Yeah. Eh, <laughs> yeah. Would be nice. Would be nice. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Uh, fuck, I don't know. Should we move on to something else? <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> uh, what, what don't I have? Uh, 
Uh, fixed country? Why don't you fix the goddamn keyboard on my notes? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think the keyboard thing came from typewriters. The um, how they used to work was the little metal thing that that uh, when you press it down, it has the little um, what do you call it? The little it's basically like a metal stamp for every letter. Mm -hmm. And I think when they tried to lay it out a certain way, like somehow it didn't work because like the keys would um would like butt up against each other or something like that something weird that sounds like some bullshit <laughs> it, wait, it doesn't just, make sense when i heard it but wait you couldn't just change the printed letter on the keyboard to a different letter no i mean it just came from when like it was physical keys oh when you're a, the typewriter yeah that's what you're saying yeah that doesn't make sense oh i see when the things would like fling up and yeah hit it. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so maybe we don't use typewriters anymore so right. we can change it people. Right. I don't I don't care the reason why mm -hmm. that person that created that that made sense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense anymore. We can change. <laughs> it's it's this cool thing we can do as humans. <laughs> um I didn't know you were so passionate about the keyboard. I wasn't. Someone just pointed out how stupid the keyboard was. And I was like, fucking right. Yeah. I was like, God damn. It's one of those things that's like, um, like when I, I listen to Sam Harris a lot. Uh huh. And when he said, he's, he says something, uh, usually when he's arguing against someone who's pro Bible, mm -hmm. one of the things he says that's very, like, very true is he'll just say, well, if you. If you, whoever he's talking to, mm -hmm. went through the Bible, you can make it better. Like <laughs> you could edit it to make it better. Okay. Yeah. And it's like it's this very simple, like yeah, yeah. And it's like, but this is the word of God, in your opinion. Mm. Nowhere of all, time isn't a thing, right? Because yeah. their answer to that is like, well, it's based on time, and it's like, well, he's God. Why wouldn't he make a timeless book? Mm. Why would he make a specific for one time book? Wait, I don't get that. What's what their argument? That it's time? That like, it's it's based on the time it was written. So, like, things like, oh, you could beat your slave, but if okay, they died, sure. it's a sin. But if they die three days later, mm -hmm. it's not a sin. And you can go, like, well, anyone knows that you should just remove that based on modern day, right? Sure. And they go, well, that was based on the time. He goes, like, well, it's written by God. Mm -hmm. He should have known First of all, he should have been like, don't have slaves. That should have been his thing. <laughs> yeah. Don't have slaves. People would have been like, oh, shit. We're not supposed to have slaves anymore, guys. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so this all-knowing future and past and all everything God mm -hmm. didn't know that you shouldn't have slaves and that it was okay to beat them. Things like that. If your daughter got raped, you know what I mean? Like you, he, she would have to marry the dude and the family should give your family like a fucking goat or some shit like that. I forget the verse exactly. Yeah. But it's like anyone nowadays would know, Oh no, that's not, that's not what you do. You know, mm -hmm. I would just, you should write that. So it says don't rape women. <laughs> yeah. Um, and don't punish the woman because she got raped. Yeah. Like that's, that's the fucking verse you would write. <laughs> you're you're not an all knowing God, yet you could see how that that's a bad verse. You know <laughs> right? I mean? yeah. It's like this. Uh, it's like a simple like it's those simple like uh, truths that are uh, once it's pointed out, you're like, yeah, why the fuck is the keyboard not been fixed yet? Mm -hmm. Fix it already. <laughs> right. I see what you mean. Uh, uh, and then we expect. <laughs> Fix the keyboard and then rewrite the Bible. It's, yeah. it's a one-two process. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, but you know, like we can't. We and we, but we expect like for pe for like the people we elect to somehow solve like problems that I. To be honest, I don't even know if they're the fucking people who, to solve them. Right. Like to solve like uh, racial injustice. Mm -hmm. Like, sh sure, you can write laws to say like don't fucking you know, uh, like hate crimes, but that's already a uh, law. Like don't commit hate crimes. Mm -hmm. And then you call the cops and they prosecute the person for hate crimes. Mm. Uh, but as far as like being like that person's racist, it's like, how do you solve, how does the government solve that problem? Mm. Is it even their problem to solve? Well, then who does? Who isn't? I would like, assume your community, mm. you know, and you would go, okay, well, if my community feels racist, I should 
go to a community that isn't that. Mm. Okay. And then the assumption is based on, I would say, financial gains of of people moving into a community. And I would assume people who are racist are probably lower on average in the IQ level. Mm. So their economy and maybe social pressures would create a thing where they can learn that they're wrong or some shit. Mm -hmm. I have no clue, but I don't know how a politician could fix that. How would they fix it to be like, don't be racist. I mean, (laughs) I don't know. Like, to be honest, I don't, you can't write a law that says, uh, don't be a racist because I don't even know what the fuck that means. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, how do you define that? And how, how, how far do you go? Yeah. I feel uh, like the, um, the laws that exist for that already are probably enough, right? Like the civil rights act, for example, all the the ones that, um, ban discrimination and you get, uh, fines or, or I don't know if jail time isn't part of it, but I know there's some uh, like weird laws that still are in effect, but they aren't like enforced. And like, mm. I think Baltimore still has like a weird one where they like in their constitution, it says something like you or whatever the fuck they have that you can't like sell houses in certain neighborhoods to black people. Oh really? And they they don't enforce it. Like or some, you know, like people of color bought houses in those neighborhoods, but it just, no one, fix the fucking keyboard. You know what I mean? No one was like, get rid of that (laughs) shit. Ed, just take it off. How could we vote on this any fucking slower? But the, you know what I mean? Like obviously those laws, you just go like scratch that bitch off. Mm -hmm. Holy fuck. Who was a genius that had that idea? Mm -hmm. Uh, And I don't know. I don't know if there's reparations involved. I have no concept behind that. I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to tackle that whole thing either, but Mm on the damage that causes to communities. I, I don't fucking know. I just don't, I don't rely. I don't think the government will ever fucking solve it. To be honest, Mm. there's no government that is going to be like 40 acres and a mule. You know what? Let's do it. Like, I don't expect that ever to happen. No matter what anyone thinks Mm -hmm. I would, if that happened, it would be some weird, I don't know. uh, I don't know how, I honestly don't see it possibly ever becoming a thing there's no there's no reparations for injustices usually in Mm. in the world they just expect you to fucking move on and they don't give a fuck about whatever damage was done Mm. like would you want there to be some sort of reparation like that i'm not i'm not against it Mm -hmm. i I mean i've heard people argue for it in an interesting way Mm mm-hmm and then explain how they could tackle it because obviously not everyone's parents were slaves, right? I mean, or great, great grandparents were slaves. Like because your color of your skin doesn't determine if you were a slave or not. So the idea was that it was guaranteed to slave slaves. Mm, Okay. So Northern uh, people who were black don't get it. Mm. People who come from Africa or Jamaica, they, they weren't a part of, Sure. Just injustice. So the idea would be, well, you'd have to figure out how to trace back lineage and prove mm. who your grandparents were. You know, and these sure. are people who are who are arguing for the the uh, reparations, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and a lot of them actually still live in the South. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it would be interesting to see how that they would tackle that, and I wouldn't be against it. I mean. You know, when we did the Mexican-American War, we're, I think we're still paying Mexico a certain amount of money based on that war. Oh, really? <laughs> we just were like, we're taking this land and we're going to fuck you up mm-hmm. if you fight us. And then we fucked them up. Sorry, Sergio. <laughs> I'll get my revenge one day. <laughs> <laughs> but then they gave Mexico buckets of money ever since. <laughs> so there is like versions of it that exist. You know, like Germany, I think they have some... Uh, things to like for Jewish people that live there, even though Jewish people like they have like the smallest Jewish population of like any first world country because those motherfuckers like I don't care what you have I don't trust you. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, I think, you know, there's versions of it. Mm -hmm. It's just Amer American, I feel like countries that have similar cultures, they just kind of, there's a walk it off, they have that mentality. You know, we're good now, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you fix it. I'm, I mean, I'm not against it. I'm not, uh, it's just how you execute it. And if it's even, if a government could even possibly do that is the question. Mm -hmm. Like, do I think our government would go like, let's figure out a comprehensive way in order to give reparations to the people mm -hmm. who deserve it. Mm -hmm. I would be very surprised if, if they could ever tackle that problem correctly. That's a good point. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, they, they do their best work when it's like the simplest things, you know, <laughs> murder, bad, nailed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rape, bad. <laughs> you got that one good. <laughs> bad stuff to kids. Yes. <laughs> we get to like more complicated ideas and they're just like, uh, they just have no concept of how to seem to tackle an idea like that. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. I don't know. Sorry for the politics talk, people. <laughs> what else we got? Uh -huh. oh, I, I think uh, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, which is kind of funny, because I think we were going to talk about the opposite last week, but we didn't. Which okay. was uh, I was listening to a podcast with um, uh, Bobby Lee and um, Rich Glassman. You know? Him? Oh, okay. I heard that one. What's it uh on his? It's a take off your shoes or something like that. I forget his podcast name. Oh, it's on his uh, Rick Glassman's podcast. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. No, I heard him on, uh, was it Tiger, Tiger Belly. Belly recently? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I heard that one too. But there was this quick little thing on, on Rich Glassman's episode where he, um, on his show where, uh, Bobby Lee's talking about, uh, Bobby Lee's like talking about how he's like, oh, I'm sneaky. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then he's like, I just, I, he, and he's like, what do you mean by that? And he's like, well, like if I see an opportunity, I take it. Okay. And then Rich Glassman was like, yeah, uh, uh, you got to steal your bases. Okay. And I thought that was like such a good, <laughs> a good, like very, like very short sum of like, of a um, of an idea that I think is valid, mm -hmm. but it's tricky. And we, I wanted to talk to you about this on the mini sode, but we'll just talk about it now. Which is like, okay, there's like, um, so there's like the take your shot, right? Which I don't, I don't hate ever, mm -hmm. but there's there's like there's different versions of this. So like, I feel like a lot of people might know the person who is saying like, do you want to do a collabo? <laughs> yeah. And, um, this idea, and it's usually like this weird thing where it's someone you've just met for the first time. Uh huh. You're not really, you don't know who he is. And then he might go like, Oh, I've seen your work. Do you want a collabo? Okay. And it's like, it's this weird thing where you're like, first of all, no, like in, like, I don't want to collabo with anyone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but secondly, it's like, there's a better way to like, you could just get to know me. Do you know what I mean? Like, why would, why would I want to like sign up for work that I don't really want to do? But also I could just, if you're a person I get along with, we could just be friends. And there's a benefit to that, that you want through a collabo, which is, I think there's some like, you know, it's like the... It's, it's, you're trying to, sometimes pe I think people try to connect your, you to them in order to validate themselves, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like this weird, like, I want to use you <laughs> to, um, to validate who I am as an artist, um, yeah. which, um, is just, in my opinion, it's silly. I mean, human, like, in a way you're going to humans use humans. Like that's a thing. And as long as you're not trying to like abuse it or, or whatever, or there's a mutual maybe friendship or community involved, it's easier to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. In my art community, if I ask someone for a favor, they might not be, they might not think of it as a, 
as like a burden they have to take on, but like, Oh yeah, I'll do that. And like vice versa. If they ask me for something, I might do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're friends. We're in a community. We get along. You know, it's easy to say yes to that when someone's a stranger and they're like, do this for me. (laughs) You're like, who the fuck are you? And leave me alone. Like, I don't, I don't even know who you are. Like Mm -hmm. you're asking me to like put in work for something that I don't want to do. And I don't know, you know, the business end of it. I don't want to figure out in the first place. It's like, it's hard to do business with people you get along with, <laughs> let alone people who are like full on strangers who have no, yeah, which it is what it is at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, uh, assuming you want to sell that piece, it mm-hmm. ends up being business. Right. Yeah. Um, unless you're just going to be like, all right, well, we're not going to sell it. And then it goes like, okay, well then, did you just get a free piece from me or am I <laughs> yeah. keeping this thing? Yeah. And what happens with the final product? Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. I have no idea how that yeah, ends I don't up working f- out. I don't want to figure it out. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if a friend was like, do you want to like work on a piece uh, together? I'd probably be like, no, but thanks. <laughs> but maybe, you know, at least then there, there might be an opportunity. I might be like, oh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah, <clears throat> as far as like, uh, you got to take, uh, steal your bases. There is something to that, which is you have to kind of, I think you have to like seek out opportunities mm-hmm. and take that shot. And some people might look at you and, and think like, how the fuck did they get that? And that's just cause they're not doing, they're not taking their shots. You okay. Know? It's like the, it's the mentality of the young artist, right? It's mm-hmm. the, um, the, I'm going to go into places I, I definitely shouldn't go into and introduce myself and hopefully they'll show my work or something, mm-hmm. knowing that they might get more opportunities than the older artist who's much more skilled and developed, but for some reason has built up a wall, maybe based on the fact that the last 10 galleries they asked out on the date said no to them. And now they're mm-hmm. like, I don't want to talk to girls anymore. You right. Know what I mean, so mm-hmm. like, uh, you gotta like kind of lose that, like, I don't know, the jadedness of, of rejection. Mm-hmm. So you can be aware of when you have the opportunity to steal a base and move and progress your career in a beneficial way. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I just thought that was a, it was like a throwaway comment from him, but I just thought there was so much in that of like, mm-hmm. of like, yeah, you gotta like, there's something to even like the act of the actual act of stealing a base where you have to be like super aware of the, of your surroundings, right? There's like mm-hmm. this like hyper awareness of the pitcher if you're going to steal the base and mm-hmm. all these like things. I am, I mean, I'm not a baseball player, but I assume, or even a fan, but I assume like you have to be hyper aware of the pitcher mm-hmm. and probably who's at bat and all these other things. And who, sure. so you feel more comfortable. And then if the uh, opportunity arises, like you can't hesitate to take that, to take that, uh, to steal that base. You have to like mm. full wholeheartedly, take that shot i see yeah Um, and that to me is very different than someone saying do you want to collabo Mm -hmm. but instead like uh much more of like you have to be first of all you have to be prepared as a person to like steal that base Mm -hmm. right it's not like um so you have to have the skill set to do so and then you have to be aware of when the opportunity arises to take it Mm um and so it's definitely a skill set that I think, I mean, MJ in general, I think she has like, she has that weird, um, unjadedness that yeah. I think a lot of artists have. She okay. takes all the shots, you know? Yeah. And it's great. It leads to opportunities that wouldn't, wouldn't come if she didn't do it. Yeah. And so it's definitely taught me that like, th- that I gotta, you have to just, force yourself to not think like oh, i don't know or or if they really wanted me they'd reach out to me or or i don't want to get i don't want to get rejected so i'm not even gonna say shit or mm-hmm. whatever right because fuck it i mean at the end of the day who cares like if someone says no 
there's a lot of fish in the sea. You know what I mean? <laughs> Being with MJ, has that made you better at that or at least less afraid to? I think so. I mean, <clears throat> um, yeah, I think, I think so. Mm. I mean, we benefit each other. And I mean, she's also like, she used to be much more like, why'd they get that kind of mentality? And I'm like, okay. and, and I'm very much like not that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, who cares? Like, they got it because they got it because they went out and got it. Yeah. So it's like this weird thing where she's a go getter, but she also hates when people get stuff. <laughs> That's I used to always call her a hater for it. So she's <laughs> slowly realized how, how like silly that is of a mentality. Oh, speaking of hater, I'll, there's a thing. We'll get to it later, but that just reminded me of something. Go ahead, get it. Oh no, I mean it'll be a whole completely different yeah, subject. We're good, right? We we can move. Well, on. we haven't really talked about this that much yet. What? Oh, uh, this whole like. Oh the <laughs> the uh, stealing your base. Yeah. Do you have an opinion on it? Well, for first, um, the the whole collaboration thing. I think it comes down to like a value value exchange thing, right? Where mm -hmm. it's like. Uh, the assumption of a collaboration between people who want to like, like it's their, both their idea to do it. It's like, they're both getting an equal, uh, benefit from it. And I think when it, when somebody like somebody who you're not, um, familiar with, or just don't think that you'll get, um, anything out of the collaboration, it's probably because there's like this imbalance of, of value right like one person is reaping all the the benefits supposedly but even when it comes to that i right? mean even if someone reached out to me and they said do you want to trade mm -hmm. and i thought like your your artwork isn't at a level that i think is equal to mine let's say mm -hmm. i would still be way more open to that than to a collabo right even if the value exchange isn't equal, mm -hmm. I would still be like, oh yeah, let's like, if I like their work right. in some, like in some, at some, in some capacity, I'm going to be like, yeah, let me get, I want some original work. Mm -hmm. I'll trade you this for that, you know? And I'm fine with that as long as the work, even if I think like, it's not the greatest thing, but I like it, mm -hmm. then I'm fine with it. Where like, if that same artist would say like, you want to collabo? I might be like, nah, I'm good because- <laughs> yeah. It's a weird, like, it's not like you're trying to, like, like, if you're wanting to trade, that means you're like, I want to own something of yours. I really like it, but I don't have the money mm -hmm. to afford it, but I have this skill set. Yeah. I appreciate that much more. The the collabo is this weird, like, which, I mean, first of all, I'm, I'm saying collabo because I think it's a ridiculous word. <laughs> sure, yeah. I just hate the word. <laughs> yeah. I should mention that because now I feel like I'm just saying it. <laughs> yeah, you're not even ironic about it at <laughs> yeah. all. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm like, yeah, the collabo is... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Webster's <laughs> defines collabo. Uh. <laughs> but um, uh, but yeah, th that that is, is someone... It's, it's a, in my mind, it's a very parasitic if you, uh, like, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like, it's, you're attaching yourself to something and it, it always seems like someone who has much more like uh, developing to do as an artist. Yeah. You know, it's never like, and maybe that says something about me, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but usually I don't, I don't really see other than like murals. I don't really see a lot of artists collaborating on artwork in general. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's cause we're, we like the control of, of the thing. I don't know. But that's the difference between a collaboration and a, a trade. Like mm -hmm. if the trade happens that, that just intrinsically means that um, they found like the two people involved in the trade found enough value in right. the other person's thing. So mm -hmm. uh, whether or not it's like objectively, like one's a better piece of art than the other, it doesn't really matter at that point. Yeah. But like a collaboration, it, it comes with all those different things, right? Cause it's like the trade is like two things that have already been created are just exchanging. Mm -hmm. Whereas you're, you're, I guess, combining your skill sets in a collaboration and you're like, well, I don't see what this skill set brings to the table that I can't like do on my own. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and that matches my aesthetic or something. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's all the complication of, of, uh, 
like what happens with this piece right. now it's like is it going in a gallery like what happens if it sells in a gallery it's right. like uh, Do I get to 60? And then you're breaking, you're getting 50% of the painting and then figuring out what to do with 50%. Yeah. You're like, the gallery took 50, we get 50. So I'm getting 25%. <laughs> yeah. If we're cutting it down the middle uh-huh. on something and you're like, nah, I don't, why the fuck would I want to do that? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, uh, but the whole like uh, stealing bases thing, you're saying like, like you're not knocking the person for trying, but it's just not going to be. Yeah, take like your shot. Uh-huh. I mean, the the problem with the collabo thing is like there's a better there's a better way to do what they're doing, which is building community. Which is like okay. instead of meeting you for the first time and being like, "Do you want to collaborate?" Mm-hmm. Saying like, "Hey, I'm Josh. I'm yada yada," and being mm-hmm. like, "Oh, I really like your work." And you're like, "Oh, that's cool. Thank you." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm hella cool like that." And they're like, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> and then I'm like, "Yeah, I'm also hilarious." And then they start laughing uncontrollably, and, <laughs> yeah. and we, you know, look at each other deeply in each other's eyes and kiss. Uh-huh. And then that's how you build community. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but something, something, you, you know what I mean? Like I learned this a long time ago. I walked into a gallery and I just started fucking talking about, I wanted to show in the gallery, yada, yada, yada. And then mm-hmm. someone stopped me <laughs> and they were like, uh, so I was talking to the lady. Cause I was like, who owns the, this shop? And she was like, Oh, I'm part owner. And I started like chit chatting or like going hard of like, mm-hmm. I want to show here. And the guy was like, the guy standing next to her was like, hi, my name is like Mike or whatever. Uh-huh. He's like, what's your name? Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, my name is Josh. <laughs> and I realized like that I didn't even take the time to like get to know her. Right. Before I was like, show my shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, give, yeah. give me an opportunity. Like, I want you to owe me this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like this weird like. Um, there's no courting, I guess, involved in it. It's just, uh, straight to the baby making (laughs) is what I wanted. All right. Um, and so there's this like, um, yeah, there's like, and, and that was kind of like when, when puppies get snapped up by old dogs and get taught to to Mm. like, there's like, you don't do that. Like Uh there's, you do it this way or whatever. And so there's like Mm -hmm. this, there's this learning curve that has to happen, where you understand like that there's better, there's better ways of like finding opportunities, not saying you can't take your shots, but just understanding that there's, it's a finesse thing. You know what I mean? Right. Sergio hit that button. <laughs> it's a finesse thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so, uh, it's like there's, there's better pathways and there's better ways of doing it. I mean, I've heard, um, very successful, like, I don't know, content creators or whatever mm-hmm. talk about how they get mad because there's this, there's this like internet, like uh motivational speaker guy who's like, take your shot, yada, yada, yada. Uh-huh. Who you do is you, you, you find like a hundred influencers and you email all of them and, uh-huh. and you say, I'll work for free, yada, yada, yada. And they're like, I get that shit every day. <laughs> it's not creative. It's not how you do it. Uh-huh. How you do it is you, you create your own shit. Mm-hmm. And you make something on your own. And then when you reach out and I look into you and I go, oh, wow, they already did all this. They already have all these skill sets. They already did yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'll get, I'll like, that seems like a good fit for us. Yeah. And that's the difference in strategy. Although they both took their shot. One's much more effective than the other because one person's relying on themselves and then if they reach out, if they get a no, it doesn't even fucking matter. Yeah. You know, okay. it's cause you're, uh, self-sufficient in a way. And mm-hmm. in my, you know, in my opinion, that's, the, I mean, that's what every artist should be searching for is how to be self-sufficient. Sure. Um, with the idea that when opportunities do arise that, um, it's just, it's just benefit, you know, it's just more growth on your, to yourself, but it's not necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. And that, and in a weird way that that creates, um, more opportunity, I find mm-hmm. the more you're self-sufficient, the more it's like the, like that, like, you know, that like uh cliche thing about like 
when a guy's married, then all of a sudden all the girls are hitting on him, or when a guy's got a girlfriend, all of a sudden all the girls find him attractive or some shit. There's something about like a person who doesn't need the thing that they th- like. It's like we're, we're the the galleries, the girl, and we're always hitting on them mm-hmm. to show us attention or some shit or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like the moment you don't need it anymore, then. There's something appealing about that, about like, right. you know, and that's, I mean, that was they a whole see the value moment. in you in that way. <laughs> yeah. 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 That I makes know. sense. Uh, and yeah, uh, I don't know, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so do we do that part? <laughs> yeah. I want to hear about these haters. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you follow uh, Milo Hartnell, right? Oh, yeah. I heard about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just on his stories uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago or something. And I was like, it's like putting this Devin Rodriguez guy on blast. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I didn't know what that was about. But um, so I'll, I'll uh, inform the, the listeners about that. Yeah. But, uh, but first I was like. Cause it was like some artist to artist drama. I was like, I know MJ probably has heard oh, about this. Yeah. MJ told me, she was like, Sergio showed me this. Like, have you seen it? <laughs> and then, all about it. That's funny. Cause I'm usually like, Hey, do you know about this? Cause like, she's the first person I ask when it comes to artist <laughs> drama. So I sent that to her and she was like, Oh no, but let me look into that. And then, uh, I found out later, but then, uh, but then MJ's like, well, I don't even like that guy, Devin's drawings or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's what reminded me. Cause, uh, she's like, because uh, I said something like, oh, that's harsh. But then she's like, yeah, Josh just calls me a <laughs> says I'm a hater. That's what <laughs> reminded me of that. Yes. But uh, it's funny because that's not even like the most interesting little beef that Milo has going on right now. <laughs> but uh, if people want to f- uh, find out what's going on with this, it's uh, if you go on Milo Hartnell's um, uh, Instagram story highlights, there's one that says, who is Giuseppe? And, uh, mm-hmm. there's a whole thing about this, uh, guy who's doing, um, it, it looks like he's painting over photographs or something. So on, I, I didn't, I wasn't one. aware of that guy. The one I was aware of was on TikTok. There's this guy. Yeah. Uh huh. And I was like, I was like, Oh my God, this is such bullshit. I told, before I saw all this, all <laughs> him to calling it out, I, yeah. I immediately could see it was full of shit. Like, sure. Because he was doing these drawings of people on the train and then showing them. And they were, uh-huh. they were, they were obviously his friends because they were horrible actors. Uh-huh. They'd be like, Oh my God, you just did that right now. This very second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, and it's also like that person just held that pose yeah. for how long. And obviously the drawing wasn't like a super quick drawing. No. No, to look like it would take somebody like a half hour at the very least. Yeah. And it's like, and even like, you can see how he's drawing that he's not like, he has no urgency to his like, Mm -hmm. to how he's drawing. So I I would even guess maybe even longer. Yeah. Maybe. And it's like, and it's, it reads so fake, but I mean, the shitty part about it is like, people don't know that. So they have this weird, like, wow. You know, and then obviously, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to call these people because their art's like average in my opinion, Mm -hmm. but they're, but obviously they're like content on social media or whatever the fuck you want to go ends up being like what they are, right? They're not artists in my opinion at the end of the day, they're, they're like these content creators or the content creating is actually their art because Mm -hmm. like in my head, I'm like, I don't know, like in the art world in general, I don't know what they're going to actually pursue. Mm-hmm. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Like they're not going to show work. They might sell drawings on their website or something. Right. Um, but I don't know. Like he's going to live in TikTok. You know what I mean? Right. And that's his world. And maybe he'll become big in other platforms. Mm-hmm. But like if TikTok dies, he's he's not. People aren't going to go and be like, oh, I need to go see this guy's work anymore. It's more like I love his videos. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know, like, I don't know, like, I don't know how to feel about that, to be honest. Cause I don't like, if it's like about his art, I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's like art student art. Yeah. You know, like that's what it is. It's not bad. It's uh-huh. just boring in a way. And there's, yeah, it's just studies. Yeah. It's just of, it's like, there's nothing 
that hasn't been done before. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, I like, I don't know. But the other guy you were saying, oh, Yusef. Uh, yeah, this Giuseppe guy. Giuseppe. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it says on the Miles thing, is uh, there's a paint conspiracy going on right now. <laughs> so uh, it says, so it starts off with him saying, like, been looking at these paintings for a while and I'm a bit suspect. And then... Um, so he asked if people think it's a um, uh, painting over a photograph, and you, I guess he like really zoomed in on some of the pictures, and you could see like there's like painting or this look looks like obvious um, photographs under the the like thicker oil paint over it, and where, where is it again? It's. On uh, Milo Hartnell's um, Instagram uh, story highlight. And what is it called? Uh, who is... It's the first oh, one. Is, okay. <laughs> and so <clears throat> he's going through it and he tried to find things about him. And <laughs> he says, like, this guy has... Uh, Oh, so here's where he talks about to clear things up. I don't have any issue with what techniques and artists use to achieve whatever result they want. I do have issue with artists lying and saying something is an oil painting when it isn't. Right. If I printed out a photo and called it a photorealistic painting, that would be wrong. This guy has art books that don't exist. Photoshop images of his work and in- inserted into different environments is impossible to Google contradictory dates on his work as well as plagiarized work. I'm not angry. I find this all quite bizarre, hilarious and confusing. Just who is this guy? Even if he painted it or not, I'm still into it. Just think it's funny. He fooled us all. I mean, that's kind of what I was thinking about it. Too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm always, I've, I've noticed a couple other artists that kind of do stuff similar to that or at least i'm suspect that they do it Mm -hmm. and they also do a very similar um um like a similar i think description of it like they don't they don't um like um they'll do things like um like they make a painting but Mm -hmm. then like the the picture of the painting versus like the final picture of the painting. Okay. I'm suspicious that they're just kind of laying over a, um, like a a tra- a very like transparent version of it, so they can find like so there's like these tiny details. Did you see the picture I sent you? Yeah, yeah. And I've always been like suspicious of like that, where I'm like, uh, like the sweater on it. Yeah. Is is photograph? I'm pretty sure, but uh-huh. it doesn't. And so, like, when I first saw the painting, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Like, the things he did. Then I was like, I don't know if this is being fully honest about it. And so, there's these, like, weird things where I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, if it's, if it's like, um, like, should they be honest and being like, what I did here was I laid over a photo, Uh very, like, light, like, lightly transparent over the painting I did as a way to get this cool effect and I don't know, like, I don't know if that's even, if the, if they have some responsibility to do that or not, mm-hmm. or if they can just be like, well, I just created this image and that's what it is. Like, I, I or should they call it digital work or m- mixed medium or is there a, is there even a fucking, um, responsibility to define it? Yeah. Um, that's a good question because the painting you just sent me, um, the hashtags say like mixed media oh, it does? painting and all that. And other people are in the comments saying like, Oh, good, good mixture of traditional and digital, which is kind of like, I don't know if he's trying to make it seem like he's, it's um, like, I don't know if he's trying to pass it off as an, Oh, well, he might've changed purely it. oil painting or not. He might've changed. Oh, really? It. Oh, yeah. okay. Because it definitely said oil painting the first time I saw it. And I was like, Oh really? And I was con- and I I remember specifically like looking at it for a long time and being like, is that like if so, that's fucking impressive. Like, mm-hmm. and he does some really impressive stuff. I don't want to name the person. Cause, sure. Uh, but it's like it's like this thing where it's like maybe he geeked out for a while and <laughs> I don't know how he pulled it off so like smoothly in a way. But I was like, I was like, this seems digital. And then, yeah, I haven't looked back at it since. So maybe 
he became more obvious about it. Mm, maybe. Um, because, yeah, it does look like it could have easily been an overlay in Photoshop of, you know, just like uh, thick brush strokes and palette knife work. Right. Over a, a photograph. But he, he does paint it because he used, I don't know if I can find it. There was an image of it, like of the painting, like on a tabletop or something like that. Okay. Where you could see the painting and it was much more rougher. You know, it was le- way less like detail oriented okay and i was like oh no for sure he digital he did something digital to it okay um Hmm. but i couldn't i don't know if i could find another version of that um and i I actually really like how it looks Mm -hmm. like it thinks i think it looks really awesome i just at the time it didn't have digital or whatever he had there mixed medium or whatever Mm -hmm. and i was like huh that's pretty um I don't know if that if that's like uh if that's being honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess it all depends on how you present it, right? Like Yeah. I don't know if uh like what pe- maybe that's why cuz he thought, "Oh, it's going to be more impressive to Instagram if people don't suspect it's digital or something i don't know well, like, to me it's like if someone put like that it's oil paint mm-hmm. and then i looked at it and i was like whole like if that like the pin, painting guy sorry or even like the uh giuseppe guy mm-hmm. like there would be some things that would be like how did he get that effect using oil paint mm-hmm. like to me that's what and i would try to figure out like how i can possibly do that to understand how they did it but also maybe utilize that same technique mm-hmm where if I felt like, where if then I realized, oh no, they actually did, it's part digital or they're painting over a picture, mm-hmm. then I'd be like, okay, well, that's misleading because, um, like, you're saying one thing, but it's obvious, like, you're leaving out information. Yeah. And it's misleading because if someone isn't aware that it's a painting, they might be like, look at this fucking thing. It's so realistic. Mm hmm if someone buys it thinking that that's fucked up as well. Like, right. That's true. If they think, Oh, look at this painting I just bought Mm -hmm. where you can easily say it's mixed medium and then you're not lying. Yeah. And they might not even understand what the fuck that means. And then that's their fault for not understanding. But if you say it's an oil painting, I think that is misleading and a lie at the end of the day. And, um, I don't like it cause I'm like, all right, well fuck like, I mean, and then on top of that, I don't think it's as impressive. Yeah. Because, you know, anyone can be a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kidding. I guess it's a skill. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a skill. Grown <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> up. Um, but, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think there. I think there's an obligation to be honest. Yeah. I think uh, dishonesty in your medium is mm-hmm. misleading, and and I think it's in it's in my in my opinion that's intentional. I mm-hmm. I'm not saying you can't do that as a technique. Yeah. I'm saying you should be honest about what you're like doing. the way he's presented it is yeah. intentionally misleading, yeah. and that's not that's not right. Yeah. Um. You know. Yeah. So. I agree with that. Yeah, especially, I mean, I don't know. He's probably not trying to sell it. I I didn't see any indication of that. But say he was, it's like, Mm -hmm. well, that's not going to go well. Right. (laughs) It's going to make everyone else. It's going to be bad for, like, selling art in general. Because, like, oh, I don't want to, like, get burned again. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. the next time that person wants to buy an artwork, is it going to be this built-in mistrust? Of right. the artist. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, should we kill them? <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah and, and I think I think people should be honest with it when it comes to like things like that. Or, yeah, for sure. Or whatever, you know. Um, and I don't even understand, like, if you put, like, mixed medium, I don't think people judge it negatively you know like oh okay like i mean mm-hmm. there's an audience for that right you yeah know? uh so go get it yeah 
there's a lot of, yeah there's a whole thing about like photo manipulation and all that it's yeah. like there's an audience for that for sure 100 um, percent there's a there's people that have video galleries and that shit is always dumb as fuck to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's true it seems, might be even worse than splattering paint on cameras <laughs> You mean like those like abstract kind of video? Yeah. Like it's like a girl walking in a hallway. Yeah. On fucking repeat for like five hours. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're like I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Like this is they were called movies. People, they're way better than this. <laughs> yeah. Um, like movies have this in them already. <laughs> and plus, you get a lot more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh uh, God! I remember. I forget where I saw it, where someone was like, "Oh, I'm, I'm." Be-, it was like some rich person, and they were like, "I'm starting to collect video, uh, video like those video, whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the fuck they're called." Yeah. Uh-huh. And I thought it was the dumbest shit. It's <laughs> weird when someone r- super rich does something like that because it immediately m- convinces me that anyone can be rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you are so dumb. That you bought a video of a lady walking down the hallway for seven hours or whatever the fuck it is. Oh, they that, bought like, it like an art installation, yeah, like basically. They, they own yeah. the video <laughs> yeah. of it. And you're like, <laughs> like, okay, anyone anyone can do it, I guess. Yeah. I don't know how. I haven't figured it out, but if this fucking dumbass who convinced himself that, um, I don't know. I also think that a lot of those people are just like born wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a, there was, what the fuck was I watching? There was something where a guy was talking about him being an a, a, a art collector and antiquities collector, right? And, and he's talking about this stuff and I could immediately tell he's a fucking idiot. Like, I'm, you know, it's those like, it's kind of like that art with that art podcast where the lady was like yeah. really dumb. Mm-hmm. What was that shit called? Art attack? Yeah. Yeah. When you would hear her talking, you're like, okay, you don't know what you're talking about, but you think adding fancy words makes it okay. Yeah. And I immediately knew this guy was just like a fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how did he make all this fucking money (laughs) to get like this huge mansion and all this shit and like spending crazy amounts of money on these paintings that sucked. Yeah. Um, And then he was like, so I inherited my wealth and I was like, okay, well there it is. (laughs) Okay. Okay, so you didn't like earn this ability to do this. Mm. You just your dad did. Your dad put in work. Yeah, and then you were like, "Cool, now I'm just gonna like collect shitty things." Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then try to convince people that they're, uh, you know, that they're. It was a lot of like spiritual bullshit. And, mm, not really. Yeah, he's like, sometimes I just stand here and look at this thing and absorb its energy. And you're like, all oh, right, fuck. <laughs> it's like, it looks like a plate. And you're like, yeah. You're like, yeah, I spent only like 60000 on it. You're like, <laughs> how much? He's like, it's the only one. It's the only one like this. Like, no one needs any more of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason there's only one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they only could find one dumbass to buy it. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Uh, fucking hell. Yeah, that reminds me of, um, I remember there was a big show at, um, I think it was the, the De Young Museum in San Francisco that, um, uh, uh, that artist David Hockney had this big, uh, exhibition of digital paintings he did on his iPad mm-hmm. and they were trying to just like, uh, spin it like, uh, oh, this, uh, this master artist revolutionized uh, landscape painting by painting on his <laughs> iPad. It's like, God, nah, people have been doing that for 10 years it's now at this point. It's so weird when they do sh- <laughs> Like when you're like, who, who, who are they fooling? It's so mm. weird when you're in the world. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. And you're like, God, you could just tell anyone anything and they'll just believe that shit. Yeah. Like the art attack lady, when she talked, I'm like, Oh my God, who convinced you of these dumb ideas that just aren't true? They're just grad school. <laughs> they're just, yeah. It's like you're repeating some shit that someone told you that just is absolutely false. It's like what you're saying, the whole like revolutionized <laughs> landscape painting by doing it digitally. You're like, no, uh, since probably the invention of paint on Microsoft, people have been painting landscapes yeah. in some form or another. 
Yeah, and they were like pretty basic little paintings too. Oh. And it's like, well, I mean, they've been doing like background matte paintings, like super high level for like 25 years at this point. So I don't know. It's like, it's one of those things where you're saying like the first person to do it, like in the art world is like the one who gets to, to claim it's so dumb ownership of it. Doesn't have to be good. (laughs) You don't even have to be first. Yeah. That's like the whole, I think we said like, I bet Jackson Paul can't even the first motherfucker to splash paint. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, it's probably true. There's some (laughs) other guy that was splashing paint as well. And he wasn't getting any attention. Jackson Paul came and was like, I just invented this thing. He was like, what the fuck? I've been doing it for eight years. <laughs> right, yeah. The fuck? What about me? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah. all the That whole, like, competition to be first at whatever is so uh-huh. fucking dumb. Uh, I mean, we're the first people to sit in these chairs across from each other, talk about these topics on this podcast, right? Uh, this at this day. exact moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So give us money. So it's worth something. I mean, yeah. It's dumb as fuck. <laughs> Everything like you can just like make up a sound and do a skip and poke yourself in the butthole. And that's the first person to ever do that. <laughs> now you title it art and I guess it's worth a million dollars. Right. To that inheritance guy. It is. Yeah. yeah just film just, it. Yeah. Film it in South. Yeah, exactly. It's a <laughs> silly idea that first is. Oh, my first grader could do that. Well, did he? Well, did he? <laughs> right. You're a fucking idiot if that's your response to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, did he? <laughs> no, but he did do a fucking that this argument doodle. isn't even original. <laughs> yeah, he did do this doodle, which is for right. It's like, yeah. Look, he fucking. So, so is it worth a billion? He, <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> Right. He's been using uh, a booger <laughs> yeah. crayon combination, which is first. <laughs> yeah. No one before. Um, he did. He drew a sun with 11 orange <laughs> lines coming yeah. off of it. Exactly. He was the first. Exactly. It's fucking <laughs> dumb. Uh, I hate that argument. <laughs> first. <laughs> Who cares? I mean... F- uh, iPhones weren't the first smartphone, uh, but that doesn't mean that they didn't jump in uh, skill level, which is why they got rewarded for what they did. Mm-hmm. Think however you will about an iPhone or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, they jumped from Palm Pilot to fucking iPhone, and then everyone was like, oh, it's like a computer in your pocket. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like it was already one the fucking BlackBerry. Oh, right. Yeah. I was going right? to say BlackBerry was like the... The OG. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's like, I don't know. It's the silly. I mean, and they were first. I mean, and there was probably something before them, right? And I think the Palms were before the Palm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Palm Pilot. Yeah. And then who kn- who knows? Maybe the Egyptians, you know what I mean? Look into it. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> uh, and then who did build the pyramids, you know what I mean? Yeah. How did they do it? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I don't know that whole, I hate that. I I just hate it. (laughs) The whole who did it first bullshit. Fuck off for all I care. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Like speaking of doing it first, like that Devin Rodriguez guy isn't obviously isn't the first person to draw people on a subway, but like, I don't know. John Wentz. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But, uh, like it's one of those things that, like every um probably like every 10 years or so at this point the new like uh recycled like the recycled fads like i'm sure somebody on vine was probably drawing uh people on a subway and putting it up but just because like tic tac or tic tac <laughs> kids in their newfangled tic tacs <laughs> <laughs> i like the white ones because they're minty and, but yeah. they taste good <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> uh, shout out. Uh, uh, but yeah, he, um, it's just because whatever you catch fire on on the trendy social media yeah. thing that's out there, um, you get your what is he like ten million followers or something? Yeah. Something crazy like is that. that. How many? Yes, something like that. Yeah. Oh god! 
but yeah, it's like, but it did remind me of those, all those like stage videos. Like they, yeah. they would do that on Vine and all those like <laughs> pranks. Yeah. Pranks on, on YouTube. <laughs> They're all stage too. You fool. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's such bad acting. And then you read the comments and all the young kids are like, oh my God, he almost beat your ass. And yeah. Like, oh, no, they're friends, everyone. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is all fake. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Goddamn. <laughs> I, yeah. And uh, fuck. But I guess the I, I guess the question is like, is that the audience you want? Is the the dumbass who believes that when you go up to someone and you say, I don't know, do you want some pot? And then you pull a pot out of your backpack or. Mm-hmm. And they're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought you meant weed, bro. <laughs> right. So, uh, or that guy. There's like, there's obviously, they're deceiving the viewer and they're lying. And like, do, is that the, like, the audience is the audience that is, I don't know. But then they, yeah. Million, like, what like, do you hey, turn that into? Well, he's going to turn it into f- pure cash money, mm-hmm. uh, which, uh, I'm jealous about because <laughs> you're yeah. like, uh, you're not great. You're, <laughs> you're lying to your audience <clears throat> and, um, uh, yeah, but I don't know. That's, I never know how to feel about this shit. Cause I'm like, at the end of the day, I don't even know if I think of him as an artist, mm, okay. at least an artist in like that, in this form, right. Of like, mm-hmm. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know if I consider him like a person who, who creates fine art or however you want to word it well like if you go further back in his instagram you could see where he's trying to do like fine art paintings like like these really realistic portraits and stuff right so i feel like maybe he was trying to get into like the gallery world but, but that, that's what i mean like, just, like he's decided not to go a different route i don't know he's not like what he creates mm-hmm. are these videos like yeah. that's his creation yeah no one gives a fuck about his art right they give a fuck about these videos that he's making that aren't real. Yeah. And so he's that, that's Mm -hmm. what he really is. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone, if Vin Diesel's not really a, a fucking, uh, Tokyo drifter, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? He's a guy who creates movies. So if I was to be like, he can't fucking drive, he can't drive professionally in a fucking Honda civic. Like, like the real, like the real guys can do you mean? Then that's kind of a silly (laughs) thought. It's like, like this guy is not in my mind. He's not an artist. He has, I'm he's sure Vin actor. Diesel can drive okay, <laughs> mm-hmm. but he's not a professional driver or something. You know what I mean? Or like, I guess Tokyo Drift is a bad. <laughs> yeah. But you know, so but like, like, so he's like the art equivalent of a TikTok star. Yeah, like he's not an artist. He can draw. Mm-hmm. He's not creating art, and like he's in. He's closer to an art student than an artist, in my opinion. Sure. Where he, where he is, where his value is, is an, a, a TikToker. Right. Uh-huh. And so I don't know if I should judge him for his art. Yeah. You know what? Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to judge Vin Diesel in his driving. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, I'm going to judge him in his acting and he's, you know, he's top 10, dead or alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> top five, I mean. Uh <laughs> Top uh, five singer as well. I don't know if you heard. It. <laughs> yeah, Rihanna cover. <laughs> yeah. Uh, talking about top fives, uh, one of my top fives died. Oh shit! Yeah. Uh, R.I.P.M.F. Doom. R.I.P.M.F. Doom. I've like this old sketchbook, and I have people. I've only had I think four people actually write in it. Mm-hmm. But I, they write their top five dead or alive. <laughs> okay. Have you done it? I should have you do it. No. But MF Doom is on my is in my list of my top five dead or alive. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this was a tough one for me. I don't know. I, I usually don't get shocked, but this was we like. I think last episode we talked about shit about like the pursuit to being original, the Lady Gagas of the world. <laughs> sure. And if you want to pay attention to true originals, like he is that guy. Like he is like yeah, uneffort. <laughs> That's who he was. Mm-hmm. It never read inauthentic. He just authentically was this person who was weird yeah. Yeah. and quirky and created weird shit. Yeah. It just is who he was. No effort given. I mean, he just, he, he, he was, he was a, like a one of a kind type of artist. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even as far as like 
his rapping goes like somebody mm-hmm. that influential in rap like nobody ever tried to like sound like him at no, all either it was which is pretty crazy hard. yeah uh yeah that was it's that. pretty interesting because like every other rapper who gets that big or like that cult following mm-hmm. you would think there would be copycats out there but not him it's just like too it'd be too obvious and, and yeah. like you can't like copy somebody like that like it's like too difficult huh? yeah, i remember like when i discovered him it was like me and my brother we were watching a skate video and it was like oh yeah uh and there was like the line of like good googly moogly <laughs> oh yeah uh something about like the loogie i, I wiped it on a dl hugely <laughs> and we started laughing we're like who the fuck is this guy <laughs> yeah and this is like oh six i think maybe oh five oh six and we like look through the credits and mm-hmm. we we couldn't find shit for him. Like yeah. I don't even know if they put Dem F Doom at the time, but then my brother randomly bought a Victor Vaughn album. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. And he was like, This guy sounds just like the dude on the skate video. We <laughs> uh-huh. bought it from like Amiibo Records. Oh right, because he had like a million aliases too. Yeah. Right? yeah. And we just there was like this like weird hunt for him because you, we just, I mean, I don't know if we just never used the internet at that point, but we were like, we just, we we kept, we were like obsessed with trying to find whoever the fuck this rapper was. How funny. Who was like super unique and funny mm-hmm. and super complicated. And we, yeah. my brother ended up moving to Australia and we'd have these like conversations like, I think I found him. <laughs> I bought like the, uh, the Danger Mouse album. Oh, uh-huh. And I was Danger like, I think Doom. his name is, or uh, Danger Doom. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I think his name is Danger Doom. <laughs> and, and I was like i think i found him and he was like oh no and then uh but it like took us forever i don't know why oh that's hilarious and uh and we because we were like i think his name we kept thinking like mf doom victor vaughn because mm-hmm. we figured out mf doom and we figured out victor vaughn and we figured out danger mouse mm-hmm. and i think uh quasimodo at some point oh, became yeah. a part of the conversation uh-huh. and we had all these and then so i found out that there was this dj named dj quasim uh, Quasimodo and I was oh, like yeah. I think uh-huh. that might, and I like looked him up and I was like I think that might be him and then I was yeah. like it's not him yeah and then we had this like long like over years until we were like oh it's MF Doom Victor Vaughn is like his alias because that's uh who MF Doom was on the comic books yeah before or, or Doctor Doom Doctor was on the Doom yeah. comic books before uh-huh. and then um like but it was like this like it was like maybe one of the last times when you're like you know the pre-internet discovery era, you know, where you would like find shit slowly. And it felt like an exploration for everything. Like Mm -hmm. it was like when you're doing art and you're like, what is that pencil that person's using? And you would like become a a detective, you know, cause you couldn't reach out to the artist. You would see it in a magazine and you're like, I need whatever that thing is in the background that they have. Cause that's how I become an artist. And so it it was like one of those type things. God damn got the rona i think um uh but uh but yeah the um it was just that was a tough one because i'm just a huge fan of this shit i was actually the day um uh, so the day before i would i like there's an i don't know if you know handsome boy modeling school at all yeah oh yeah <clears throat> so i was hanging out with a friend and then um I was like dropping off. I gave you tamales, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was giving him some tamales and then we hung out for that day and he was playing some music. And then all of a sudden a handsome boy modeling school song came on and I was oh, yeah. like, oh fuck, who is this? And he was like, handsome boy. He did, Cause it was like his bottle or oh, uh, it was like some mix that oh, uh, okay. like Pandora or some shit. Uh-huh. And he was like, handsome boy modeling school. I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> I was like, I forgot they even existed. Yeah. That was a collaboration between a collabo collabo <laughs> between, uh, what's the name? Prince Paul and someone else. I can't remember. I'm bad yeah. at names, <laughs> but, uh, uh, so then the next morning, which, uh, was, New Year's Eve, which is when you found out he died, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like listening to Handsome Boy Modeling School, and it took me on this like weird rabbit hole of like that genre of uh-huh. like there was an album I had called OK Player, which was oh, uh-huh. produced by Quest Love. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and had all these features. And then I started listening like different music from the Wu Tang. Mm-hmm. And then just like those like weird compilations. Yeah, that's how I found him. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit. And I was like, so I was like listening to like all these rappers that I was like, I forgot fucking like. Um, these people like even existed or were, yeah. or, you know, it's like, the, like, I mean, not like some of them, like, you, you know, like MF doom, you never forget mm-hmm. Del the funky, almost sapien. Like those mm-hmm. guys, you're mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, you're always like, I mean, uh, style P or whoever, but like, there's like other, like littler names where you're like, Oh, this, I remember <laughs> yeah. every word of this fucking song. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have so many of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're like, I don't even know who sings it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was like listening to MF Doom that day, and then later I was like, I was like, oh fuck, he's like, and then you find out he died in like Halloween, and you're like, yeah, you're like that's such a like a very MF Doom, <laughs> is <thing>. it? it? Yeah, <laughs> you're like fucking, of course he died months ago, <laughs> and somehow he kept it secret. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, it was a tough one for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. Uh, it, it, that's how I found out through him because, like, that was back in my uh, in my little Sergio Lopez uh, hip hop. Sergio Lopez, <laughs> yeah. my loop. <laughs> yeah, back in those days when I was just like consuming every weird underground hip hop mixtape mm-hmm. I could find, and uh, that song from his uh, first album from Operation Doomsday, mm-hmm. the one where. There's like a guy in the chorus that goes like, he's super. I don't remember if you remember that song at all, but uh, it's like this really weird, like lo-fi version of that song too. It's like not even mixed right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, it was just one of those things where like, it's like, who is this guy? Yeah. And like this song kind of, like the beat is kind of Wu-Tang-ish. So maybe I'm thinking, like, oh, it's like one of those weird, like Wu-Tang offshoot type guys. Yeah, like the Shaolin or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. And then, like, you go through it, and you don't have, like, back in the day where there was no um, info on him yet at all. Like, he didn't, like, put anything out. Like, he's yeah. always been, like, super elusive and mysterious. I know. And then um, that album comes out, and that was, like, my favorite album for a while. And then he kind of, like went off and did like all these other different little side projects too. So it kind of mm-hmm. reminded me of Wu Tang ish where he had like these, he kind of went in this like, um, like Godzilla direction with mm-hmm. some of it. I remember that monster Island czars. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was like his, his it. basically his crew. Uh, he had like a little kind of offshoot. Um, so yeah. Was, and then like, so he was super active when he, um, when he was doing stuff for Adult Swim, I think that's mm-hmm. where most people found out about him. Yeah, I th- but think then, so. Yeah, and then he just kind of dropped off for a long time, right? I'm yeah. not really sure what happened there, but he, he had like a lot of features. mental problems, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think he would do features every once in a blue moon, and you'd yeah. be like, oh, I never heard this thing before. Mm-hmm. But he pretty much disappeared. Mm-hmm. I would see, like, I remember watching, like, a uh, Odd Future thing where they ran into him. And I was like, oh, yeah. oh fucking MF Doom. <laughs> uh-huh. And he, I remember thinking, like, God, he seems, like, I don't know. The, it's just something about him that I just like. Mm-hmm. Do you know, it's like his, like, oh, I'm not, I'm not famous. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. just, uh, even, like, <clears throat> you know, there's, like, the stories of, like, when he first kind of became MF Doom. Mm-hmm. And it was like through like I know we had like the like like the East Coast and the West Coast they had these like weird like underground cafe rap things that they would you know uh, uh-huh. have yeah. like um, uh-huh. and he was going to like an East Coast one I forget which one it was but it's like where he would just wear a, a stocking over his face and rap uh-huh. so he could be anonymous <laughs> yeah. it was just like it's just like this weird like it's just him in like a weird environment already. And he's like, I'm going to be even weirder. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to wear a gladiator. I just want to be anonymous. And, so I'll yeah. just wear stocking over my <laughs> face. Uh, so, um, yeah, I don't know. Like I like that. I mean, I always like when an artist kind of tries to be anonymous in general. <laughs> yeah. I think that's always like a, a really interesting thing to do because, there is something that I think a lot of creatives aren't appe- or, or like isn't appealing, which is like the attention or the I don't know fame or whatever you want to call it of like that environment. I think a lot of people are kind of like I don't want to sign up for that. I just want to create cool shit mm-hmm. and hopefully 
a good amount of people can <clears throat> be aware of it, but I don't want anything on me. I just want the art to kind of live. Mm -hmm. And I think MF doom was a version of that. You know, it's like, he's like, I'll put on this mask. So like I can walk around mm -hmm. and be normal. And then when I put on this mask, all of a sudden I'm like this rap superhero. Yeah. Uh, and I can live fame free in a weird way, which yeah. I, I always appreciate. I mean, I appreciated that with like, when the monkey or the, the monkeys? No, what the fuck? Gorillas? Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, the gorillas came out. I always thought that was like really interesting. Any kind of person who's like made it to a, especially like a, a really high level, you can always do like research and find out who the fuck they are, I feel like. Mm -hmm. But, um, but the fact that like the majority of people that can listen to a song and know it, not have an idea of how you actually look mm -hmm. to me is like, is like, it's, it's very relatable in a way, you know, like, yeah, like you just want to create the thing that you think is awesome mm -hmm. and you don't want attention for it. <laughs> you want the attention for the thing. Right. I think a lot of artists are like that. I'd say so. Like yeah. Painters or whatever, that kind of artist. Mm -hmm. It's the benefit of being a painter, I think. It's being like, this is my art. <laughs> yeah. Don't give a fuck about me. I care about that thing. Yeah. I think we were talking about like <laughs> being an artist is the best kind of fame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you can make it in that. In that in this arena, then it's nice because you can live off of your skill, mm -hmm. and hopefully, the work gets a, a lot of attention. But you don't have to, um, yeah, be the you know the symbol of what it is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, like uh, like James Jean is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. Like, I would say most people don't know what he looks like at all. <laughs> like, yeah, but he's killing it yeah, eight foot tall black man yeah exactly with purple fingernails that he 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 um paints every wednesday mm-hmm mm-hmm mm -hmm. because he's a laker fan <laughs> la base <laughs> yeah, <like> yeah. <laughs> r.i.p kobe <laughs> r.i.p uh but yeah yeah i figured i'd bring that up <laughs> yeah uh, no, that's a good yeah. good uh acknowledgement uh shout out to Shout out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Have we got anything else? Uh, yeah, I do have this thing that came up. Uh, speaking of like things happening anonymously. I don't know if you heard about the, the Cookie Monster mural. I did a little bit. I can't remember exactly. It's been a while. The one in like Russia or something? Uh, well, it wasn't in Russia, but it has like Russian lettering on it. Oh, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. I'm, so... I'm um, for people who didn't hear about this. So um, there was a guy who um, painted a mural on the side of this guy, Nate, Nate Compte, his building in Peoria, Illinois. And uh, I guess this happened in, after Thanksgiving. So one day he, uh, he, he goes to his building like after Thanksgiving and sees this big 30 foot mural with cookie monster and like kind of looks like Russian propaganda mm -hmm. type of, of a poster. And he's like, uh, I guess there was a local artist, Joshua Hawkins, um, painted the mural over that weekend. And, uh, so he calls up the, the Joshua Hawkins guy, Nate Compte does. And he's like, are you the one who painted my fucking building? <laughs> and, uh, cause I guess he, he was giving out his business cards. That's how we found out who he was. But mm. apparently, uh, he thought that it was Nate Compte, uh, um, the artist. Uh, he thought he was, um, given permission. Or yeah. He was talk like he talked with the guy who pretended to be Nate Compte, the building owner. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what are you talking about? Like, you're the one who, who gave me the permission, uh, gave me the money and all that. So there's this guy who, for some reason, nobody knows why to this day, just, uh, wanted this guy to paint this, uh, mural on, um, Nate Compte's building. Mm -hmm. I have a theory. What's your theory? It was Banksy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good... <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I guess uh, there was... Uh, yeah, it could be... 
Yeah, a million things. Why did Compte need the mural painted so quickly? Why over Thanksgiving weekend? Why was he offering so much money? It says Hawkins declines to name the figure, but it says it was a good amount, well worth my time and effort. <laughs> so I don't know if it's such a guy pranking Nate Compte, but like it's such a weird uh, way to prank somebody if it is, but kind of a, a good way of doing it because it's so mysterious. <laughs> yeah. If anyone needs me to do that, let me know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't they repaint it? I remember seeing something where they're like, they repainted the Cookie Monster mural, but fixed it. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I can't remember where I saw that. Let's see. Like... Update. The site has become a memorial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Okay. So, stopped at the cover up Cookie Monster, a uh, covered up Cookie Monster mural this morning while out on a ride and there were teddy's flowers and candles is there a hashtag for this thing uh yeah like, people just started putting uh yeah little so funny. like if somebody died there uh art died there that day <laughs> yeah exactly uh yeah i don't know i mean it's hilarious <laughs> I, I love the i mean there's something about like when something mysterious happens that just it's so good. Yeah. You're like, why would, like, because for instance, like they had those like monoliths, right? That popped up. Yeah. And they're whatever, like, oh, yeah. In a way, you know, like they're people trying to create this mystery. Mm -hmm. But there's something about this one that's just like so much better. Yeah. It's just the fact that, like, he's like, I need a cookie monster. <laughs> yeah. And, needs and, to be Russian. Yeah. It needs to be <laughs> Russian. Uh, and, <laughs> And like the, the the fact that the artist isn't even the person who plotted this thing, but yeah. it's just some other guy. <laughs> yeah. Like that's the great that's the great uh, thing about this. Uh, what if the artist is lying though? That's the real question. Oh, then he's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> what if the artist is like, is like, what are you talking about? You? It was like, um, it's like one of those like on the fly. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> you told me. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And then all of a sudden it just led, it's like one of those lies that just has to grow to make sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I but. also love the, a uh, building owners, like, um, his genuine reaction to this. <laughs> yeah. It's like, he's like, why the hell did you paint this crazy shit on my building? <laughs> Uh, if you remove like the Russian writing, for some reason it doesn't seem like some sassy machine. Sassy, sesame Street. Sorry, sesame, sesame, sesame Street. Yeah. Sesame Street. Um, uh, propaganda <laughs> yeah. thing. But uh, uh, yeah, it's hilarious. It's not well painted. I'll tell you that. But uh, he did his best. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That. Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, uh, that's the see. That's the kind of news I want. That's yeah. the kind of news I want. Yeah, exactly. that's what I need in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I need shark attacks. I need mysterious Russian murals popping up. Yeah. <laughs> Funded by, I don't know, Putin maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Russian Illuminati. <laughs> fuck, <laughs> just fuck real Nate on there. <laughs> <laughs> Someone spray, did, spray painted fuck real Nate on the wall. <laughs> uh, that is so funny. God. <laughs> That's funny. <yeah. laughs> fuck real Nate. Oh, man. I love people sometimes. <laughs> oh, Hate them sometimes. Love them sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You guys aren't that bad. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Did we do it? Did we, did we, did we nail it? Yep. Pretty good. Awesome. Just under two hours, but. Awesome. Well, hopefully you guys, we should have like a, a beginning thing where we say, uh, if you don't want to hear me rant about politics, skip to, and then have one of those robot ladies go like, <laughs> 876. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> I can do that through the power of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Well, this has been waiting dry. Uh, if you're still listening, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>